Hey everyone, sorry I haven't had that question and answer video up until now. Uh, just made it home for a week off for 4th of July and I've had other stuff going on. Before we do the Q&A for this week, uh, I'd like to tell you guys what I was thinking about for the upcoming videos. I'm still working right now on uh, basics, just kind of uh, umpire basic stuff. When we get that out of the way, I feel like we can talk about uh, individual rules and individual umpire situations. We can't have that conversation until we know where we're supposed to be and what our responsibilities are. Okay, let's get to the Q&A. Uh, Jamie had a couple topics. First, he'd like me to go in a little more detail and clarify the advantage video that I put out. Just to emphasize, we're going to call everything that we see. If calling that was going to disadvantage the person fouled, we'll make sure to move it up and escalate it until we feel like it's an advantage to that person. Could be as much as a goal or a shot at goal, something like that. We're going to make sure to call everything so that we don't encourage people doing bad things, but we're going to make sure to escalate the penalty enough that it gives advantage to the fouled side. Okay, yeah, Peter wanted to say that for people that are new to this where to be on the field as an umpire situation. This picture that I'm putting up now with the red and blue lines shows the blue umpires responsible for certain lines. Peter wanted to say that the, the blue lines are the blue umpire's primary responsibility, but the red umpire is not restricted from making calls on those lines also. Stacy brought up a topic on the walk-in lineup video where if the umpires are struggling to keep their lineups clean, one strategy would be to have the players wait back and to walk in together. And she asks, can section captains request this kind of a lineup be the norm for their game before the games match during the, the meeting? And our response to Stacy is, of course. Um, during that meeting, having a lineup discussion, what the umpires expect would be fine and the the appropriate time to have that conversation. Just respect that the umpires may say no. Different umpires are going to have different ways of controlling the lineup and bringing the conversation up in that meeting is great, but the umpires may respond with, no, I like to do it uh, this way and give you a different example. But having the conversation is helpful for the umpires and players. Okay. This last question is from Ronald Borda, has a very, very good question. It regards an infraction that happens in midfield near one end zone. So at one end of the midfield, you give the ball to the fouled side, but you think that they need it needs to be moved up. His question is, how far should they move it up? Should you move it up to midfield by the tees, or do you need to move it all the way up to the line? The answer, Ronald, is you'd move it to the next 30-yard line. The way that our penalty section is designed, you either mark the spot where it happened or you move it to the next line. Uh, the midfield spot is not a spot that we're using for uh, advancing the ball down the field for advantage. I didn't have a whole lot of questions this week. Hopefully that's not because of lack of interest and participation. Hopefully it's because the videos are so thorough that it leaves no room for questioning. I'll just pretend like that's the case. And there were a couple other comments that I did not address. And if I didn't address your comment, it's because in the next few videos, we're going to have a specific video on that topic. We'll talk about it then. Until next time, happy 4th of July. Chief Ump out.